the pursuit of power can be all consuming. Couldn't have put it better myself, Gearbox. So Tiny Tina's Wonderland's Glutton's Gamble is out now, and it's the second DLC after Coiled Captors, which had you entering a mirror and running a single dungeon of reused assets in order to spin a wheel for items. Gearbox heard you. They saw that Coiled Captors was the greatest DLC of all time. So in their second, they've given you even less. Yes, aren't we lucky? You don't need a new staging area, just a single 10 minute dungeon with a boss that changes form slightly every week for four weeks. A few new items and some more flamboyant cosmetics that I demand that every personality type love. And don't worry about the items. There's no doubt they'll also be gimmicky and not good for the endgame builds because that's just a waste of time. <laughs> Why give you a new story area? You'd hate that. Why give you more fluff? You're happy with what you have. This is all you need guys and it's the ultimate value for money. When I said I was afraid that all the Wonderlands DLC will be just more mirror based self contained tiny dungeons in my last video, I appreciated people calling me out. It seems as though this hub world will be a staging area for other mirrors with more battle arenas coming in the form of other DLC. If this is the case, this is a very ballsy move by Gearbox as the four DLC should really be one complete DLC or each drop should have been free. I was so wrong. Well, N not wrong in the literal sense, more wrong in not loving the scraps that Daddy2K have been feeding us. They're frankly delicious. So Glutton's Gamble is the perfect personification of Wonderland. We're the Glutton's people. They're gambling to see how much delicious DLC they can feed us before we pop nom nom and this gamble is paying off big time. So let me put that all aside and run through their spiel of the new DLC. Vesper and her Mirrors of Mystery are located in the Dreamvale Overlook just outside of Brighthoof in the Overworld. The enemies within have a baseline level of 13 and will scale to your Fate Makers level beyond that, making the Mirrors of Mystery a worthy, repeatable endeavor whether you're still early on in your Fate Makers quest or you've forged yourself in the flames of the most difficult chaos levels. But tread carefully, because dying within the Mirror of Mystery will kick you out of the looking glass. You'll have to start over if you want to show Amelda who's boss. For three consecutive weeks following the launch of Glutton's Gamble, Amelda will cook up a new potion transforming her into an ever more voracious beast. With each progressively tougher form, new legendary gear will... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm just wiping away drool from my face. This all sounds amazing. Will be added to the loot table, giving you good reason to return for some rematches. Those new items are in addition to the wide array of fresh cosmetic items you can collect, whether random drops from enemies within the Mirrors of Mystery or when spinning Vesper's Wheel of Fate using the Lost Souls you collected during your Mirror Dimension battles. I'll discuss the planned schedule soon for when Amelda takes on new deadlier forms along with the planned loot additions for each difficulty level. You'll have to beat each form consecutively even if you're playing Gutton's Gamble after the following dates have passed. Vesper will reveal unique insight into Amelda's motives with each difficulty level, beat all four to hear the full story and I cannot wait. So so the first form is May 19th obviously and you may get a new garlic breath legendary spell and precious jam stone legendary ring. The second form is May 26th and you may get a new salt and battery legendary melee weapon and liches augur legendary ward. The third form is June the 2nd and you may get a new bolt lash legendary spell and miasmic chainmail legendary armor and the final form is June 9th and you may get two new legendary guns. Oh, two, they're so generous. Oil and spice and butter boom and the bar bold legendary amulet. If you can successfully complete Glutton's Gamble at least once, it's five unique level layouts and a Melda boss fight will be added to the pool of chaos chamber possibilities for even more end game dungeon variety. Combined with the ongoing series of limited time mini events and weekly featured runs that are constantly being added to Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, there's lots to be gained from besting Amelda's new forms each week. Good luck defeating Amelda and her cauldron full of culinary chaos. And good luck to everyone listening. No doubt you're stabbing your boss in the eye and taking a dump on your partner's bed in order to play this DLC right now. I wouldn't be exaggerating at all by saying this is the single greatest achievement mankind has ever made, besides roast chicken in a can of course. There isn't much else to say. I want, no, 
I expect you to buy this DLC and go play it right now. You're doing yourself a serious disservice denying the light that is Glutton's Gamble. When humanity ascends into godhood and we walk the halls of time, you want to be able to say you were there when Glutton's Gamble was first released. Some of the higher beings jealous of our achievements might call the DLC a shameless cash grab, but to you I would suggest shamelessly cash grabbing their godly nuts and twisting because if you head to Dream Veal Overlook, which is near the starting area of Wonderlands, and head into that mirror, you'll have the best 10 minutes of your life. Don't forget to spin that wheel for your three blue items. So thanks so much for watching guys, for everything RPG, you're in the right place. Ciao friends.